Some of you who are already aware with the prophetic ministry, I'm Tomi Arayomi. I believe in times and seasons fundamentally. I believe in restoring the integrity of the prophetic that the prophetic is necessary for today. That the prophetic is the foundation of the Pentecost church and are part of spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Of course, I believe in Jesus Christ because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I am absolutely against cessationism, and I love the gifts of the Spirit because they're so needed and vital for today. Why prophecy? It's a very vital question. Why do we need prophecy? What do people get out of prophecies? In Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17, the Bible says the decision is announced by the messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict in order that the living may know that the Most High is watching over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone who watches and sets over them the lowliest of men. So the reason why the prophetic is necessary for today is so that the living will have a God moment because God said it, that it happened. So the living are forced to say, like Nebuchadnezzar, surely God, there is a God who watches over the affairs of men but neither sleeps nor does he slumber. Are we at the precipice of World War III? Let me tell you what I saw in the spirit and then what I heard. I saw like the news where Bibi Netanyahu declared war with Palestine, with Hamas, Iran, where whichever you want to say it, I saw where he made that declaration. Now in the spirit, I heard the Lord say these words to me this morning, declare war has begun. It was almost as if we've crossed into World War III and nobody knows it's happened. Let me explain what that looks like as a biblical illustration. If you remember in the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the announcement of the day of the birthing of the New Testament church just so happened to be on a day called Pentecost. The New Testament church was birthed on a day called Pentecost. We run with the common conception that we are Pentecostals, not realizing that explanation that day just so happened to be the day of the birthing of the New Testament church. And it took a prophet and apostle standing in the office of a prophet to stand up and say, we're not drunk as you presume, we're not Pentecostals as you assume. This is that which Job foretold, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, it took a prophet to define the day. It took a prophet to say, this is that. This is it, unless what would happen was the people would go into a place where they would begin to think that maybe this is Pentecostalism, maybe these a drunk man. This is more than Pentecostalism. This is more than drunk man. A prophet had to announce, this is a declaration of a new epoch of time. I heard so clearly in the spirit, prepare for war, prepare for war. It was, it was so clear. It was a resounding word in my spirit. We have now crossed into Thera of the wars. And I gave this prophecy three years ago. Some of you have gone back and looked at it. I saw the uptick in that prophetic message uh, about how we got to pray that Netanyahu he will be shaken. And then there'll be an intensified Iran. So when Hamas came to the forefront, the Lord told me that's not Hamas. The Lord told me that's Iran disguised as Hamas. And then I said, this is going to be reported in the newspapers 24 hours later. It came out in the newspapers. Why? Not so Tony can be a great prophet. So the living may know that the Most High is watching. The whole purpose of prophecy so that you're watching right now will know. The Lord is watching over the affairs of men. He's speaking in the affairs of men. Well, what's he saying right now and how do we prepare for it? I believe this is that. I believe what? In another, this is that moment that can be found in the scripture. It can be found in the Word of God. Zechariah chapter 14, the Bible says in verse 1, Behold, a day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided in your presence. For I will gather all the nations for battle against Jerusalem, and the city will be captured, the houses will be looted, the woman ravish, half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be removed from the city. There seems to be a culmination of nations right now gathering themselves against Israel. People are going to appear to be for Israel, but then they're going to kind of change a little bit and you're going to see a little bit of a shift more into a Palestinian support than an Israeli support. Listen, the word Palestine is actually an insult. It's not a nation, it's an insult. So for those of you like Free Palestine, Palestine was an insulting term given to Jerusalem by a conquering emperor who decided to change the name to Palestine because somewhere in the book of Judges, he read how the Philistines will always torment the children of God. And so he renamed it in mockery of the Jews. He renamed it Palestine. This is a land that has always belonged to the people of God, the Israeli, the Jewish people from before you and I wherever on the scene. So I'm going to tell you what I believe the church needs to do right now. The Lord call, 
and I'm going to read some things the Lord said to me in prayer because we got to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But we've also got to hear the Lord for Jerusalem as well. The Lord calls Hamas the tip of the spearhead. It's the tip of the spear. It's not the rest. Others are going to respond. We're seeing Hamas right now, the tip of the spear. We already saw the uncovering of a mosque, the Iran face behind it. We're going to see other nations. I actually believe prophetically we're going to see Iraq. We're going to see, we may even see Morocco. I mean, distant parts of the Arab world are going to begin to respond to this in a different way. I'm actually trying to pull up this, this map right now so I could tell you the nations that I saw. I saw Iraq. I saw Yemen, even though they're somewhat defeated. I saw Egypt. I saw different nations. Afghanistan, I saw them gathering around to add their own insult and their own war and their own strategy to this tip of the spearhead that others were going to ensue with their own attacks and try to cripple the nation at this time. Then I saw a season prophetically where I saw Netanyahu shutting. Not just food, not just water, not just food supply. I saw people genuinely suffering inside the siege. And then I saw others who were pretending and using young children ass heels and starving kids as PR to say, look, what's happening to us? World stage set in, and all of a sudden what started off as will support Israel became a shift again, and people and nations began to shift and support Palestine. I believe right now, the Lord is getting ready to impregnate prophets with intercessory fire. Is going to come such a strong prophetic intercessory win, not just for prophets. Prophetic people are going to catch this morning cry, nighttime cry, saying it's time for us to intercede. And from that, there's going to be a release of the word of the Lord. Listen, I know some of your thinking, this is like every other moment Israel's been besieged by Palestine. This will go away in no time. I literally believe this. I saw the enemy running rampant throughout the Middle East because he knew that his time was short. And I saw him just like in the book of Revelation where it says he chased the woman into the desert. I saw him so angry for this holy land to claim this hot spot strip of lamb, this territory that he was wrestling over. And the store in the midst of that, the Lord saying, release the chief angel. And we know that the angel over Jerusalem is the angel Michael. I believe that the hand of the Lord is saying, now if you're releasing that level of angelic presence, listen, I got to say this, so go Israel, so go the world. Let me say it again, so go Israel, so go the world. I really, really believe this. So go Israel, so goes the world. There are people politically right now operating in a political spirit saying, well, we got to pray for both sides. And I believe that, do I believe there are Christians, Christian Palestinians, of course I believe that. But can I tell you something? I literally saw the words pro-vax, anti-vax, and, and then I saw that being deleted. Then I saw the word black lives matter, white lives matter. Then I saw that getting deleted, and it was insane. And then I saw the words pro-Israel, pro-Palestine, and I saw argument breaking out, not in the world, in the church. I saw them arguing and fighting over this word, and it caused another big dichotomy. And I asked the Lord, why am I seeing this? And the Lord said, this will be that kind of season again where I will show that there must be divisions among here so that I can know those that are mine from those that belong to another spirit. There will be those who will move in a political spirit to call Israel, the Jewish people, the occupiers. And you'll hear Christians doing this. Can I tell you something? It called the scripture for a reason. Stick to the script. Stick to what it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If I should forget you, let my right hand lose its cunning. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. This is a time for the church, not to be political at a time like this, but to choose to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. There's something happening. And I want to tell you right now, this is not prophetic. This is real. I want to tell you right now, this is not about dividing the land equally. We're talking about an enemy like under the Amalekites that believes that Israel has no right to exist and the Jewish people have no right to live. The Spirit of God called it a spirit of genocide. And this is the next thing I'm gonna say. People are going to say this is worse than 911, and then people are gonna say this is worse than Hitler, and this will not be hyperbolic. There is an agenda in this war, and you know, every war has an agenda. There's the wars that have the agenda of oil. There's is war that have the agenda of special interests. This will be the agenda of the spirit of genocide, and men will begin to say this is worse than Hitler. This is worse than the times that Hitler tried to kill the Jewish people. It's going to force a nations to choose. Whereas before we could be political, pro-vax, anti-vax, pro this, anti, this is going to force nations to choose. Do you want to be a public defender and a private offender, or do you want to make a genuine stand? I even saw America's political debates shifting out of the season of 
Let's talk about health care, medical care, and the war in Ukraine. All eyes were now on Israel. All eyes were now on Palestine, and different nations were coming around. In my last prophetic video, you saw how I, the Lord, released that men would say that this was funded somewhat by America. And this is the next thing I'll say. And articles again have come out about I heard this figure 6,000, thousand, thousand, which is going to become a lot of a humming noise. 6,000, thousand, thousand of U.S. money was unfrozen to free, uh, uh, I think 566 six unlawfully arrested Americans in Palestine. And I actually believe that there is some truth to that. This fight has been funded in many ways by President Biden. And I literally see, prophetically, I saw people trying to get rid of him. I saw two political figures arguing, and I saw people trying to get rid of President Biden because at this point, he was too much of a dead weight. Now in this season, what can the church begin to do? Here's the map of the Middle East. And I want you to know, whilst I was praying for Jerusalem this morning, the Lord said, pray for Saudi Arabia. The Lord said, pray for Saudi Arabia. And I asked the Lord why, and the Spirit of God says, this war centers around not just Israel, it centers around Saudi Arabia. The Lord says, I want to make Saudi Arabia a gateway to the Middle East. And there was something getting ready to happen that caused this war. I literally believe this so strongly. That the, the, the war that happened just recently all hangs on Israel and Saudi Arabia. Years ago, you'll know under Trump, we had a peace treaty that only Saudi Arabia was left wanting to adhere to and determine terms of peace. And I had a vision, and in this vision I saw Saudi Arabia shaking hands with the sons of Abraham to welcome them into their nation. And I saw people protesting, how can you let these pigs upon the holy land? They call them pigs. It was so clear to me. How can we let these pigs, these unclean ones, to desecrate the holy land? And I saw in this signing, I saw in this signing, in this signature, I saw them exchanging hands. We will give you oil, but we need your technicians. We need your AI specialist. We need your tech. We need your, your trade secrets. We need you to come and help us build our digital world. And we will give you oil for that. Now I want you to look around Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is the biggest financier of oil around the world right now. And I want you to look around them. They're surrounded by Israel's enemies, surrounded by Israel's enemies. You see Yemen, you see Oman, you see Iraq, you see Iran, you see Iran, you see Afghanistan. Not so far, you see Lebanon that's surrounded by enemies. It's almost as if they're saying, I dare you to support Israel. I dare you. And this is a prophetic picture I want us to pray, that the Lord will just as he's releasing this army. The Lord says, you're going to hear of miracles. The Lord says, you're going to hear, I even hear the Lord say, you're going to hear the sound of ceasefire go out at least three times, just like the cockroach three times. You're going to hear ceasefire, 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 ceasefire. And they're going to try. The United Nations is going to try and determine terms of peace within the ceasefire. But they're not going to realize the law says that they are fighting a spiritual battle that cannot be ceased in the natural. It can only be ceased in the spiritual. And the Spirit of God says you are going to begin to pray because the Lord says, I want to make Saudi Arabia a gateway to the gospel in the Arab world. And you're going to see, says the Lord, from the gate of Jerusalem to the gates of Saudi, a ladder and a release of an angelic army. And men are going to report miracles of deliverance, miracles of safety, miracles of provision upon the battlefield. For the Spirit of God says, I am not just shaking Palestine. The Lord says, I am shaking my own people, says the Lord. And the Spirit of God says, I am shaking Tel Aviv and I am shaking the Supreme Court. And the Lord says, I am shaking them on my threshing floor because the Spirit of God says, I desire holiness in the Holy Land. And where my land has become a dan of thieves and robbers, the Lord says, I am redeeming a people for myself in the Holy Land. Now listen, there's a gateway. I believe it. There's a gateway that the Lord wants to open up. Now let me tell you what I saw finally in the spirit. I saw wolves moving in different parts. I saw wolves in Saudi Arabia. I saw wolves in different parts of America. I saw, I saw, and I've shared this before. I saw New York on an alert. I saw Washington on an alert. I saw different parts of Florida standing on alert because there were wolves. And these wolves were shaggy and raggedy looking. They didn't look well kept and they did not have pack leaders. They were isolated wolves and they were in different parts of the Middle East. I saw them in Saudi. I saw I saw cars blowing up. I saw shopping malls and centers being shut up in different places. I just saw key targets where these lone wolves were being reawoken, and I saw something that had gone to sleep waking up again and raising up its ugly head. And the Lord says, beware of the lone wolf attack. 
The Spirit of God says this is a time for prayer and intercessory strategy. Now I told you, I'm, I'm going to finish by telling you what to do, and I'll hopefully, God willing, if I'm not traveling, be back on tomorrow to tell you a little bit more. But let me tell you uh, the final thing I really believe that you and I have got to now seek the face of the Lord. The Bible says as we see the evil they're approaching, we're going to encourage ourselves and pray prayerfully, encourage ourselves. We're coming into a day where now we need to know more than ever what to do, what to do. I just see someone commenting. I just saw Neil told, New York told, Mayor told them, be careful, there are lone wolves, thank God. And for that word, I believe we're going to hear this more in different parts of the world. I believe this. Some said yes. I live in New York, protection of my son. He travels through Manhattan. He's protected in Jesus thing. I just believe that we got to start quoting the scripture. And I've been praying this over my wife while she's asleep and helping my kids. A 1,000 will fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near my dwelling. Only with my eyes will I behold the punishment of the wicked. But prophetically, what can we be doing when the time of the Prince of Persia, the modern day Iran is Persia? It's the same Persia that Daniel prayed and Fawcett 21 days to shift the climate and to partner with the angelic hosts. I believe God is calling us to a new level of partnering with His Spirit. I believe the Lord is calling us to a new level of prayer and intercession. I just have to believe uh, that now is the time for the body of Christ to rise up in a prayer warfare, posture to begin to push back and resist the Prince of Persia. Remember what Daniel prayed for us? Forgive me and the sins of my land. Forgive the sins of my people. Forgive, Lord. Then as you're forgiving, forgive Tel Aviv. It's a sinful city. Forgive. It's gay pride. It's LGBT fantasies. Forgive hell, the holiest place in there, Jerusalem. Bring us back our city and our people's righteousness. I believe we got to take a stance. We got to choose this day. He's still the God of the Jewish people. We're going to pray for the Lord to protect the Jewish people, the people of Israel. Pray for the Palestinians. Pray especially for those of the household of faith that God will preserve them, will protect them. That innocence, death would be minimized. I believe the greatest revival that the West is ever going to see is now upon us, and we're going to see a harvest of souls as we begin to prioritize the nation of Israel. God is going to open a gateway in our churches, and we're going to experience the greatest moves of God at revival and the awakening of the Ecclesia. Why? Because now there's a common enemy that's forging a spiritual warfare to rise up on the inside of us to pray like never before. There's some of you that the Lord will touch their heart to find a way to go there and cover them and provide humanitarian aid. I believe there's on both sides, actually on both sides, and we're going to see the Lord just moved in such a tremendous way through the church sending relief. But when the time of the awakening of the Ecclesia like never before, God's army is being awoken like never before, please like, share, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, press that bell. God bless you.